Hello my soccer universe. Unfortunately last learned yesterday that it cannot always go up and after the high in the Europa League, yeah, I fall the low. And that it is exactly the derby is probably not uh, the best thing. But we'll speak about the derby which saw uh, local rivals Blau Weiss Linz win fully deservedly 2-0 after a rather lackluster, especially first half that just didn't look right. Not what Lask has been showing in the previous matches. Uh, we also have that, you know, top of the table is tight again with Salzburg dropping points in uh, Vienna at Austria. However, that was actually in a way even uh, lucky because Austria Vienna very well could have won this game. But it speaks also for the form of the Viennese teams where uh, both of them are now not in the top six. And especially at the repeat, there are uh, major rumors that the coach is about to get fired. Which in a way doesn't make sense. Yes, they have been underperforming uh, results-wise. But if you look at some a little bit more statistics and so on, I think if you just look at the XG table, Rapid are actually second or third in that one. They create a ton of chances. They missed a ton of chances. And it was actually both of the games against Lask. I mean, one that I saw myself where um, Rapid actually played over relatively well. It's just that they are leaking goals at... Um, times where you shouldn't and then when you could make a goal and this was also on the game as on, uh, on Saturday in Hartberg when you should make a goal you're not scoring and that is never a good uh, re recipe but I think it's not necessarily the coach's fault and I have many uh, experts that I heard yesterday agree with that they were a little bit astounded but again I think it's just uh, if you're at such a big club and repeat are the biggest club in Austria regarding the fan base a lot of pressure comes and they are expected to win every every time and those subtleties get lost look for instance manchester united in england at the moment and there's a whole lot of kaboos around it but i want to do it and i want to start doing something that i've been not doing uh, for uh, champions league and europa league already i want to talk about the games well while i'm talking about the games you also see not only the results, but you also see the current standings and my calculations in there. Um, and I will mention them while I talk about the games and not have a separate section at the end. I will still keep uh, the section uh, with the upcoming games at the very end. Okay, let's jump into it. I uh, want to start with Austria Lusna's last game in their stadium before it's being rebuilt. They have then moved for the last game, which I think is against Lusk have to move to Bregenz uh, and yeah they will build a new stadium there. Curious fact about that move is that uh, Bregenz who have a second league team um, in order to be able to play there they actually financed for that team the uh, heating of the pitch because otherwise they would have to play in Innsbruck which is f quite a way and we would have another team without a really home field advantage as we have already in Tirol. Uh, unfortunately, the last game did not go well. I mean, uh, the attack of Wolfsburg is one of the best in the Bundesliga uh, at the moment with Boakchi and Palo. Uh, really tear, tear, tear it up again between the two. They scored the three goals. Yes, uh, Lusna pulled it back to 1-2 two, and 2-3. Two, but Lusna at the moment seemed like the weakest team in the league. Uh, the biggest game probably of the weekend, yes, uh, no, normally there was the derby in Linz and there was Austria against Salzburg, which is normal, but if you look just by the table, I think Hartberg against uh, Rapid kind of stood out in that uh, sense. Hartberg took a really good shot through Lang, uh, took the lead in sixth minute already. However, then Rapid were just uh, outdoing themselves in missing chances. Uh, that's exactly the recipe for disaster. Also curious, I found that uh, Rapid Vienna played in the red strip instead of the green, because I think blue-green would work, but you know, I'm not deciding that. I mean, I think maybe red uh, red and blue, probably a little bit better contrast. However, as, as, as may, um, it was really a damning defeat. In, in a sense, and Hartberg getting points of Rapid regularly. And this is what Hartberg do, actually, like that they tend to get points against bigger teams uh, on a regular basis. And I mean here, especially Rapid and Lusk, uh, they always seem to get the points there. And then also Ray Ragnar up against Gasmol. Hartberg is now, if you look at the table, in fourth place level with Lusk, uh, which is an outstanding performance by them. And 
I don't think they will become champions, but I think they're already more or less securing their stay in, in, in the top league, which is always their league goal. Uh, trying to work on staying in the league is also what Tirol are doing uh, on the weekend. I mean, they got a 5-1 win over Altach, um, which came a little bit as a surprise because I, I thought that Altach had steadied themselves, but now they're they are also hitting a little, a little bit of a rough patch. Uh, the game was basically decided in a 15-minute period before the half uh, with uh, Ertitala and then a, an on goal in Prelitz scoring, making it 3 nil at the half and then it, it was going only one way. This was for Tirol a really, really, really big win uh, because they were down there uh, fighting against relegation. Yes, it is still early and you know points get halved so you can still get implicated, but get, get getting points is at least a little bit of an advantage. Then uh, among the sound, the games, let's talk first about um, Klagenfurt and Sturm Graz. Also a good duel because Klagenfurt uh, were in fifth place, Sturm Graz in second place. So also quite a good, a good and also a regional derby. And Sturm had kind of a rough patch also losing to Austria Vienna. Then uh, yes, they won the derby uh, in the cup, uh, but then they lost to Lask, they lost in, Berg in Bergamo. So they were kind of, it's, and coach was I saying, a little bit the end, the end of the engine is missing. This time they got the uh, lucky, lucky punches going their way, scoring early for Gordon Stankovic already, uh, and then Tommy Horvath adds another one, and uh, it's actually two <laughs> by, 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 by the token, and the win was secured, and Sturm Graz are back on track, actually at this point taking the lead in the table. At the same time we had the derby, and yeah, let me talk. This went exactly as I feared. First off, Robert Schul, uh, our captain and most creative player, and basically the, you know, uh, the glue that holds it all together. He's like in the Big Lebowski, the the rock that tied the room to get so well to, together. He was out with because of a yellow card he uh, got against Sturm Graz. So major offensive potential missing. Uh, you had the big Europa League game and you played in uh, the small stadium of Blau West Linz that holds only five and a half thousand um, against a team that sees this as the game of the year. Uh, so energy levels were not high. In addition, may it, I don't want to make it a big deal, but I honestly felt that um, you could have rotated a little bit more. And I think the rotation that happened was not the rotation I wanted, I wanted to see in, in, in a way. I would have liked a little bit in mid, in mid midfield and maybe give some other creative players. But for instance, putting Goy, Goyginger, he has not been great. But I think uh, he, he can give a spark that I would have loved to see. Be it as it may, um, F. Balaweis did exactly what what you do against a, a last game. You stand compact in the defense and you hit them on the counter. Where Lask are vulnerable and they have shown this in games against lower op op opponents this season quite a few times as well and then uh, they forget Ronnie Waldo uh, the big star um, in the 29th ninth minute who scores at this point it was not that Blauweiss had many chances but it was coming they were the better team at this point uh, and I think at the half being only 1-0 down was actually uh, kind of lucky then you make a few changes uh, at, at the half, you have a lot of possession, with a lot of empty possession, you still did not have a shot on goal. For me, uh, the one thing I probably sh should or could have turn, turned turn the game was a foul of Pirkli on Stojkovic, where if you look at the replay, he steps solely on the ankle. He got a yellow card and this was reviewed and it was uh, kept a yellow card and honestly, when I look at what Marcus Rashford had to suffer in the Chair Champions League for a much less egregious foul where I said this is a red card, it should have been a red card too. Yes, it was not on purpose, but the player had to be taken off. Uh, and it was a clear stamp, a really dangerous one. This should have been a red card. I absolutely, I maintain this and this was the only, th I don't think the referee did many mistakes, but he, uh, he maybe let the game run a little bit too much for my liking. But it was not, it was mostly done. I don't want to take that away from Blauweiss Linz or, 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 or so on, but this is a decision that could have gone the other way. That's my opinion. Um, 
blau weiß coach uh, Scheiblin, they made another good uh, call in putting on fire talk for Ronnie Waldo, who is, you know, a, a aging striker. Luskin actually put up the pressure with, uh, but you know, it was, the creativity was lacking. Uh, you had the feeling if a goal comes, you might a, be able to turn the game, but the goal came then on, on the other side. Again, uh, being caught on the counter in a fire attack makes a shot that he will only make once in, in his life. Weirdly enough, when he had it, I saw it coming that, yeah, he will not make me go on exactly like a fracture of a second later. He unleashes. It, it was a great shot. It's 2-0. And that was the game. Uh, afterwards, you could see the last bench, uh, especially the coach. He was destroyed after that that one because uh, he knew that this is an important game. But again, uh, and I told my daughter after the game yesterday as, uh, as, as well, because now she's known as being a Lask fan. And there are a few Blavice fans in there that kind of when she was wearing a Lask jersey. Tried to bully her, although I think my my daughter is relatively resistant to it. I said, you know, uh, for them, you have to see them in, in Brooklyn. Yes, they won deservedly. Congratulate them. Um, but they're not the better team. You just have to look, look at the table. We are three. They are now in number nine. Uh, and the other thing is that for them, this was the game of the season. And they had a full week to prepare. Our games of the season are now Salzburg, Sturm Graz, and whatever is happening in the Europa League. And that's quite a level above so there, there, there goes a Linzer uh, derby that I unfortunately did not attend uh, a we were away and B uh, with so limited tickets available um, no uh, there was no way to get there I didn't want to sit among blau fans for that one the round ended with a nil nil between Austria Vienna and Salzburg um, and Austria Vienna, and this speaks for two to them, they, they have been actually had a really, really good run themselves, having not con con conceded goals, and I think are majorly on the up, although they're now outside of the top six. But they actually were lamenting that they didn't win that game. They had the big chance in the 80th minute when Schmidt missed a penalty. A penalty probably should not have been given. There was also a red card before that. I honestly didn't see much of this, so I cannot really tell you, unfortunately, much there. But yeah, from what I hear, this was a relatively lucky point for Salzburg, which also tells me, yes, yeah, Salzburg is a little bit in a funk at the moment because they are um, having many in interests and need to play the kind of the same place. So it's it, it's not an easy period for, for, for them as well. But on the other side, um, this would be an opportunity, and that's why like a loss for Lask in the, in the derby hurt so much that also Sturm Graz did not have such a good spell hurt so much. Uh, Yes, you do not win the league in the fall. You actually win it in the spring, especially with the format of the Austrian Bundesliga. So maybe there's a little bit to, be to go, but I honestly think that Salzburg, again, will prove to be the best team in the league. There's still very much 67% uh, chance that of them becoming the champ uh, champions and they're even winning all the, you know, the expected uh, uh, regular season. They will win by as mentioned above Sturm Graz. They, of course, will uh, are also the top favorites of the championship. But on top, it is now tight. I mean, we have 30-30 Sturm and Salzburg are equal level. Five points is probably a step too far for both Lask and Hartberg, but you know here having the point helps because suddenly uh, five points go into three points with the rounded down, so there's an added bonus there as well, which might put you just within distance if you can keep it up, but I think I'm not sure if both teams will be able to keep it up. Uh, if we look now at the next round, which is after the international break, yeah, this is the last home game for Lask in the league. Uh, with three more rounds to be played against Tirol. This will be another tough matchup that they just should win. I will do a video on, on there. We have Salzburg against Hartberg. That will be a very interesting at the at the at top deal while Sturm Graz should win against Lusner. So it could be the Sturm go back into the lead. Uh, Wolfsburg against Austria Vienna is an interesting one because Wolfsburg coach was the Austria Vienna coach and an Austria Vienna legend. So that might be interesting. And then we have a workers duel between Rapid and Blau Weiss. I'm curious what will happen at Rapid, whether they will have a new coach there already or not. Any case, that's it from me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, uh, this video. Drop a line if you want to see more and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.